I know, under the circumstances, it's a bit much, but... You see, you do have a unique knowledge for our purpose. And we'd love to have you with us. You mean to tell me that that's why you brought me here? To ask me this? Oh, frankly, yes. Major, I just got out of there. My escape was a miracle. Even your people said so. And now you want me to go back? Don't be ridiculous. Oh, this is very embarrassing. I oh, let's stop kidding around. I can't go back. I don't belong to you. I belong to the American Navy. Yes, of course. Actually, Colonel Green has already taken the matter up with your people. With my people? Yes, your navies turned you over to us. A uh, signal arrived uh, yesterday morning from your CNC Pacific, authorizing your temporary transfer of duty to Force 316. They can't do this to me. Well, I'm afraid they have. <laughs> It was awfully difficult to know how to break it to you. No, but they can't do this to me. I really mean it. My Navy's made a mistake. Oh? Look, I'm not a Navy commander. I I'm not even an officer. Oh. No, the whole thing's a fake. I'm just an ordinary swap jockey, second class. Oh. When the Houston sunk, I made it ashore with an officer, a real commander. Later on, we ran into a Japanese patrol and he was killed. I figured it was just a matter of time before I was captured, so... So you changed uniforms with the dead man? I thought officers would get better treatment in prison camps. Well, that's very sensible. Not that it did me any good, because at Saito's camp, the officers worked along with the rest. Yes, there's always the unexpected, isn't there? I kind of got used to being a commander, and so when I arrived here at the hospital, I took a look at the enlisted men's ward, and then I took a look at the officer's ward, and I said to myself, oh, let's let it ride along for a while. There were certain definite advantages. Yes, I saw one of them on the beach. Anyway, that's the whole story. And the point of it is that you can't use me. You want an officer for your team, an American commander named Shears, and he doesn't exist. When the Navy brass learns the truth about me, they'll say, ship him home in irons for impersonating an officer, something like that. Once that happens, I've got it made. Got it, one? May, I'd like that drink now. Oh, I'll apply for a medical discharge. I'll tell him that I impersonated an officer because I went off my rocker in the jungle. I'm getting worse, you know. Sometimes I think I'm Admiral Halsey. Well, that's quite a clever plan. It's not only clever, it's foolproof. And my Navy finds out who I am. Those temporary orders you've got won't be worth the paper they're written on. This is your photograph, isn't it? Where'd you get this? Well, it took a bit of doing, uh, because naturally your people couldn't identify you at first. But finally, your CNC Pacific sent us a copy of your service record, a um, photograph, uh, fingerprints, uh, everything. Would you uh, care to have a look? Oh. You see, we've known about your um, actual rank for nearly a week. Your name is in an awkward position. In one sense, you're a blasted hero for making an escape to the jungle. But at the same time, they can't very well bring you home and give you the Navy Cross for impersonating an officer, can they? I suppose that's why they were so happy to hand you over to us. You see? Hot potato. As far as your present rank is concerned, we're fairly informal about those things in Force 316. So you will have the simulated rank of Major. Simulated Major. That figures. Well. As long as I'm hooked, I might as well volunteer. Good show. Oh, Colonel Green, sir. This is Major Shears. He's just volunteered to go back and help me blow up the Quai Bridge. Really? Good show. Jolly good show, Major.